Episode 13, Beauty and the Heart. At that moment, everyone felt a chill and looked at Rose, and then Jeff. Jeff's face stiffened, and his heart felt like it was being pierced by a needle. A faint feeling of regret rose inside of him. Jeff shifted his gaze away from Rose's face. With a smile of understanding appearing on his face, he nodded, put down his spoon, stood up, and walked outside. Walking out of the elegant restaurant, Jeff looked up at the night sky with wrinkled eyes and his heart filled with bitterness. Joe and the others tried to chase after Jeff. Jeff walked along the street toward the university. Both sides of the street were lined with a variety of cars and street lights with dim white lights. Passing through the couples, Jeff felt a little lonely. He lowered his head slightly and quickly crossed the street. He walked onto the campus and headed towards the dormitory. Alfred, Jeff's family butler, called as Jeff tried to lay down on his bed. Jeff, the person in charge of the East Coast Division, Kenneth Stokes, knows that you've been in poverty training in New York for many years. He hopes to meet with you. Jeff's family business is centered in the United States, with businesses and influence all over the world, including South America, Western Europe, Africa, and East Asia. That's okay, Jeff said with his easygoing personality. Since there wasn't anything going on at the moment, Jeff added, it would be good to see the people working for my family. All right, I'll notify him right away and ask him to meet you at Peston University then, Alfred suggested. No need Alfred, I'll go see Mr. Stokes. It's not convenient to meet at the university, Jeff replied, rejecting Alfred's suggestion. It would put on too much of a show of Kenneth. The head of the family's main district came to the university to meet him. Jeff didn't want to look too flamboyant, and he still wanted to stay in university for a few more days to live a peaceful life. Jeff, you are a descendant of the family. It is not in line with the rules for you to go see him. Ken is just a person in charge of a large area. How could I bother you? Alfred said in fear. It's fine, Alfred. You're overthinking it. I just want to take a walk around the city. Don't worry about it. Jeff didn't care much for these formalities. Jeff, you treat your subordinates well. I'll speak with Kenneth now. Alfred said with a grateful voice. Okay. Jeff said and hung up the phone. Alfred called back right away. Jeff, Kenneth will be having lunch at the Golden Five Star Hotel tomorrow. Would it be all right for you to join him there? Tomorrow works for me. Jeff replied. After hanging up with Alfred, Jeff laid down on the bed and played with his phone for a while before falling asleep. He woke up to the sound of voices, squinted, and saw that his doormates had returned. Ray is such a pain, he still has to go sing after dinner. He's got such a bad voice. Roy been cursed. When we came back, it was already raining. He couldn't have taken Rose out for a ride on his motorcycle, right? Carl Cooper frowned as his glasses reflected the lights. All right, go wash up and sleep. Stop being so noisy. Joe saw that Jeff was sleeping and whispered to Roybin and John as they went to wash their faces. The next day, when Alex walked out of the dorm on his way to class, the ground outside was already wet and the air was fresh. After his second class, Jeff felt he needed a rest and went to his dorm. He was getting ready to put his head down on the desk when Joe hastily ran in. Something happened to Rose. Joe exclaimed worriedly as he ran over to Jeff. What about her? Roybin asked with his mouth wide open. Rose was too much, wasn't she? One incident after another. Roybin thought to himself. Did she fall yesterday? John asked without shock. How did you know? Joe asked, feeling slightly shocked. It rained very heavily last night. If they were on a motorcycle, it would be very easy for something to go wrong, said John as he pushed up his glasses. Yeah, I was training on the sports field just now. Susan called me. She said that Anthony took Rose out for a motorcycle ride when the ground was too wet. They ended up in the hospital last night. Their dorm went there early in the morning. She told me to go visit too. Joe told him in one breath. Come on, let's go see her now. After all, Rose had invited us to dinner last night. Joe patted both Roybin and John on their shoulders. Let's go see her, said Roybin as he and John stood up. Jeff, are you coming? Joe looked over at Jeff, who was just sitting there in his seat. You go ahead. I still have some things to take care of. Jeff said, shaking his head. Yep, good, said Joe. Having learned from yesterday's lesson, Joe didn't force Jeff to go. 
He followed Roybin and John to the dorm room door, waved goodbye to Jeff, and with that, the three of them disappeared. Jeff got up and walked out of the university. He called a taxi, went straight to the Golden Five Star Hotel. It was considered one of the most luxurious hotels in New York. Although New York was filled with tall buildings, this square glass building was quite eye-catching. The hotel's plaza that surrounded it was filled with all sorts of luxury cars. Jeff walked towards the door of the hotel. When he walked in, he found that the door, which seemed very low from a distance, was as tall as the floors. The hotel interior dazzled in golden jade. The grand crystal chandelier, golden lights, beige floor tiles, bright red carpets and exquisitely dressed service staff were all showcasing the extravagance and richness of the hotel. Jeff stepped onto the two-meter wide red carpet and walked towards the elevator. As the elevator doors were slowly closing, Jeff saw a woman with flawless makeup running toward the elevator. He quickly pressed the button to open the doors. She had long and beautiful hair, snow-white skin and long eyelashes. She wore a pink chiffon sweater and a pair of tight jeans with a diamond necklace hanging from her snow-white neck. She looked very full of energy. Jeff stepped to the side and let the beautiful woman walk in. He could smell the scent of her expensive perfume. Her walk drew attention to her curvy figure. Jeff had only seen this kind of beauty on his computer before. He was stunned to see a real-life woman like this in front of him. The elevator door closed, leaving only Jeff and this long-haired beauty inside. With such a stunning beauty next to him, Jeff's heart was moved unknowingly. His gaze had secretly drifted toward her. What are you looking at? She exclaimed as she turned her head and stared at Jeff. Nothing. Jeff was shocked. When her flawless face appeared in front of him, his heart jumped as if it were about to fly out of his chest. It startled him so much that he quickly stood up proper. Her face turned red when she saw Jeff blushing from her remark. She turned back again to face the mirror-like wall inside the elevator, fiddling with her necklace and bending her face slightly closer toward the wall. She puckered her lips to check her lipstick. Jeff had already warned himself not to look at this woman anymore. But now that she had moved her bat was even perkier than it was before, how could he bear it? He secretly reached out and touched her, but while sneaking a few glances. Are you still looking? She turned around and asked aggressively, stopping only a few centimeters away from him. She trembled slightly, and Jeff could feel a trace of her warmth. Jeff's heartbeat quickened, and he felt a sudden hot sensation in his nose. Blood began to flow out. He quickly raised his head. You have no future. Oh, you're bleeding from your nose. Seeing this, she was no longer angry. She crossed her arms and looked at Jeff with a smile. Jeff felt his nose itch you. Jeff couldn't help but sneeze. Yuck, why are you so lacking in manners? She shouted. Jeff opened his eyes and saw that he had just sneezed, spurting blood from his nose onto her brown t-shirt. Sorry. Jeff quickly apologized and took out a tissue to wipe the blood off her t-shirt. Jeff's hand had already touched her chest. He'd even wiped it twice with a tissue. But in less than a second, his attention shifted. So big. It's so soft, so soft. He thought dreamily. What are you doing? She shouted while angrily glaring at Jeff. Jeff still couldn't react. Pervert. She cursed angrily as she raised her hand and slapped Jeff across the face. At that moment, the elevator reached the top floor. As soon as the elevator door opened, the long-haired beauty ran out toward the bathroom. Jeff touched his hot and painful face. Looking at her back, he was slightly dazed. The five laps across the face were worth it. Jeff hurried forward to apologize as he saw her come out. Scram! If it wasn't for the important guests I have today, I would have you sent to the police station. She didn't accept Jeff's apology at all. She pushed him away and quickly walked forward in her heels. Jeff staggered as he looked at her back. He scratched his head and went to take care of his nose in the bathroom. Then he slowly walked to room 10, which had been arranged for his meeting with Kenneth. 